You're watching the Health Now Nutrition Podcast, advancing our holistic and nutrition industry, one story at a time. Presenting your host, Michelle Post. Hi, everyone. Welcome to Health Now Nutrition. And today we have the amazing contributor for the book Saved by Nutrition that is blocked by my hair today. And this is Linda Kellogg. Oh my gosh, she has an amazing story that she's going to share with you today that is actually quite mesmerizing. We just talked about it and it's like, no, you got to share this story because oh my gosh, this happens out there and it's, it's just really good to know how well you've helped yourself. So I'm just going to share a little bit about the amazing Linda here. And uh, so Linda recognizes that many of the baby boomers generation face common health challenges, including inflammation, digestive issues, high cholesterol, and type 2 diabetes. Many need to undergo surgical procedures. She feels grateful to be able to work with the boomers and seniors to help them attain a healthier and happier existence through nutrition and lifestyle changes that are customized to them super important. Linda is an avid paddle boarder. Love that. And has practiced yoga for over 10 years. She begins each day with a long nature walk with her dog and practices the holistic lifestyle that she believes in and experienced. Linda is a devoted mom of her two teenage daughters. So if you'd like to learn more about Linda, you can email her at Linda J. Kellogg, K-E-L-L-O-C-K, at gmail.com. Welcome to the show, Linda. It's so good to have you. Thank you very much. It's very good to be here. That's awesome. And especially in our weird world right now where everybody's doing webinars or seeing each other face to face, it is so good to see your face and this beautiful pink color you have with you today. <laughs> Must be all the dog walking outside. Right? <laughs> You're having a lot of sun there? You're in Ontario, yeah? Yeah. You know, it's not too bad. Um, it's every other day, you know, we'd see, we had snow last week and then we had sun and then we had rain and then we had snow. I guess that's, you know, April in Canada. <laughs> right. It's very, it's such a, such a weird place. It's so interesting. We go 20, 20 degrees in any direction at any time. It's amazing. Hey, <laughs> yeah. Keeps you on so, your toes. Right. Exactly. So Linda, you run an amazing um, nutrition business in Ontario and obviously you really love working with seniors or baby boomer generations and you're still working with them. I definitely am. Um, it is, you know, a passion of mine to, you know, just remind people that, you know, there's a way to age and a way not to age and aging well is going to become key as we age. Right. <laughs> so you know, there's some adjustments and, and lifestyle changes and definitely nutrition changes that can help you do that. It makes a huge difference in how you feel, how you look. Um, so yeah, you know, that's, uh, that's where I've put my niche. Plus, a lot of the people in that category experience cancers, they experience surgeries. Um, I've kind of championed my way through both. And nice you know, it's easy to kind of slip into that mentality where you're taking pills and, and, you know, managing pain and not thinking that there's anything else you can do. And there's lots of other things right. that you can do to rebalance and feel better and leave those medications behind and yes. do better. And yeah, so that's why, I, that's why I like that whole age group, you know, they, they need the support. Absolutely. Absolutely. Our whole trajectory in our lives have actually gone way to the, um, everything's medicated. As soon as you hit 40, you start getting prescribed your first. And then by the time you're 50, it's another two or three. And then it's just uphill from there. So it's yeah. so good to know that you're out there helping people be able to stave that off, if not alleviate. Right. I have, I have clients that, you know, we work together and they're on no medication and they're in their seventies. So it Beautiful. can be done. It can be done. I and agree. it needs to be done. We just, right? you know, we just accept it and we really should not. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. So you were able to write your own health story for the upcoming Saved by Nutrition book. What was it like for you to just get that story down? It was really, really therapeutic, to be honest. I mean, I learned a lot from you just on, you know, the writing style to be in a book like this, which was fantastic. But also, I mean, I never really journaled my way through my experiences, and I probably should have. Um, so to get it 
written down, you know, and, and really sit back, you know, now that I'm on the other side and analyze it and think about it. Um, it was kind of like finishing off a chapter for me, you know, putting it behind me, dumping the rest of it out. And I really, it was amazing, actually. It was really amazing to do it. Yeah. Wow. And I'm so glad that you did because you do have quite an inspirational story and one I hadn't heard of before. So, you know, yeah. I want to get to the meat of that too. So <laughs> just for all you all to know, our story today starts off with a cancer diagnosis. But before you got diagnosed with cancer, tell us what was going on for you. Yeah. Um, well, I never cancer never entered my sphere ever because my you know family history and everything like that and I, i'm pretty relatively healthy person at the time but you know busy mom and maybe not eating as well as i should all the time and maybe having a little too much wine here and there and you know not as our having, age group loves to do <laughs> maybe not having as much time to exercise as i would like but um yeah, so anyway, I found myself after my kids and everything, I was really, really top heavy and I was having difficulty, you know, doing yoga and doing some of the things that I truly love because, you know, if you picture strapping a 10 pound bag of potatoes to your chest and then trying to get some things done or just, you know, engage in some kind of sport, even riding a bike, wow. you know, there's pain involved and, you know, I just got fed up with it. And then someone pointed out to me that, um, it is actually in our medical system recognized as something that's um, a medical condition. You know, it does impact your life and, and your health. Um, even, even just your breathing, to be honest, like it's just heavy. So, so just for people okay. out there who don't know, you're talking about a breast reduction. I had a breast reduction. I found out that that was something that was, you know, available to me and I jumped on it. I thought, oh, this would just be, the, this would just improve, improve everything for me. Um, you know, so I went for it. And what I didn't know is they always take samples of any tissue now that they remove from your body and it goes straight to pathology. Interesting. I didn't know yeah. that. I thought they always had to order biopsy. Well, I don't know across, I, I just know that in the, in Markham Stovall Hospital and in general in Ontario, I don't, I can't speak, I guess, for all of right. Canada, but it makes sense. I mean, if they remove any tissue from your body, it immediately goes to pathology and they test it. it was never mentioned to me, but they did. And right. then that's when I got a call from the plastic surgeon saying oh. that, man, I need to talk to you. So and before she tells you what the surgeon said, I'm just going to reintroduce that you can get a hold of Linda at her own email at Linda J. Kellogg. So that is L-I-N-D-A-J-K-E-L-L-O-C-K -L -L -O -O at gmail.com. So, okay, now continue on. You got a call. <laughs> I got a call and I didn't think too much about it, but I thought it was just a follow up for the surgery. And the surgery, to be honest, was, was fine. Um, I recovered pretty quickly. But um, I, I went in and that's when he just looked at me and said, you know, I, I hate to break this to you, but we found cancer cells amongst the breast tissue that we have taken out. Um, and because, so we let that sink in for a minute or two. Right. So that just explodes, you know, all you hear is cancer and it's like, what? So when you should, when they say that on like the TV shows and there's that big ringing that goes into the ears, so the doctor's talking and you really can't hear him because you're just like, what? Is that yeah. like, is that how it was? Yeah, although he's pretty intuitive, so he actually stopped talking and let me <gasps> absorb things, right? Um, I so, didn't get that. could you try again? Anyway, Cortana. Uh, <laughs> what's that? Cortana. <laughs> yeah. So. Um, and then the big shocker was, so I, I, you know, and then he started to explain that it was, you know, a very common, very treatable kind. And so my heart rate started to go down a little bit. Um, but then he hit me with something that, you know, was just mind blowing. He said, you know, if a cancer surgeon had taken a lump out or something, like everything would be marked a certain way. We know exactly where things came from. It's all marked and, you know, we know, but with you, we just took you know, like all this tissue and it all went into like this bag, left, right, whatever. We don't know. And so we can't tell you exactly where this is, if it's all over in one spot. So the only real, well, you have two choices. You can remove all of your breast tissue 
or you can do a wait and see. Oh. Maybe you're going to get breast cancer and maybe you're not. So whew, he kind of looked me in the eye and he said, I could probably introduce you to at least a hundred women who would want to be in your shoes right now making this decision. Oh, so, oh my yeah. gosh. Right. Who could, who would just say there's no option. I mean, honestly, it was a 30% chance of me developing breast cancer further, like, for it to grow and, and become more menacing than it was at that point. But, and that could have been one year, two year, five years, 10 years, never. Right. But you're playing Russian roulette with your life. And I just chose to be super proactive. And I had no idea what I was getting into, to be honest, because the surgery is brutal. I mean, the removal is one thing and then the reconstruction is another. It ends up being four or five surgeons Wow. Yeah, it's, it's actually a lot. And then um, there's the antibiotics and the pain pillars, and it just goes on and on and on. And then I had an infection, and that, that didn't turn out well. And I had to get one removed for a year. I had to let it sit with nothing for a year. And it was just, it went on for years. It went on for wow. years. Yeah, yeah. Wow. So, but having said that, <laughs> right? I think I made the right decision you know, in being super proactive because the unknown would just, you're, you're basically waiting to see if you get cancer. And right. Yeah. I just need to do that. So when did entering life changes start for you during that journey? When you're hit with something like that, two things happen. Um, you start to get an appreciation of what other people have gone through with cancer and you start to build a little bit of gratitude like the one thing i have to say is like no one ever told me i was going to die so i started there and then then you start asking yourself well why you know mm -hmm. i'm not there's just nobody there's no aunts and cousins and mom it, like nobody with breast cancer no BRCA gene, like nothing so why did this happen you know and that's where my journey started with um re-examining how I was living, mm -hmm. reprioritizing my life. Um, and I, I've been fortunate because I grew up with a mom who really did believe in, in nutrition and the rainbow of vegetables and just eating well and, and, and living a certain way. But I kind of gotten away from it, just, you know, modern life, right. you know. Um, so I started to go back to that. I started to just rethink everything. And then I got a brochure in the mail one day from the Institute of Holistic Nutrition. And I read it over and I went to the open house and I was done. It's like, this is my tribe. This is what I want to do. This is what it was like assigned. It was like a sign, you know, wow. I don't, I don't want to be in the corporate world anymore. And I don't want to, you know, be rushing around and not having enough time with my kids and not, you know, having time to cook a proper meal. Um, and, you know, I want to help other people get through situations like this. I was very blessed. Like I say, I have to be grateful that, you know, it wasn't a more menacing type of cancer. And I certainly have people now that, that have in my life. Um, so, yeah, it was, it was a spiritual journey. It was like yeah. just a big journey, you know. Absolutely. And so you started integrating your own nutrition program. When, whereabouts were you on this journey? Um, do you mean after graduating and starting my own practice or? No, when you started to implement your own nutrition for yourself and how did that work out for you moving forward? Right. Well, um, it sort of coincided around the time that I had, uh, you know, signed up for, to become a holistic nutritionist. So that made the job easy right. because I would, I would come in every the week. Lead. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it was perfect. I would come in every week and, and just, you know, have my mind completely blowed um, of everything that I was earning, learning. And I started to implement the things that I was being taught right away. And just going back to, you know, eating organic food, like I used to eat organic food all the time and somehow I wasn't anymore. And, you know, it's just, um, going back to see my naturopath and, and talking to her about what we could do and, and learning about the supplements that she was recommending. And we have an amazing 
an amazing uh, dispensary, homeopathic dispensary here in Markham as well, and going to talk to them. And, and just being surrounded by that energy at school was fantastic, it, it you know, so and, and okay, don't, no, you don't need to take that new medication, like take this instead. Here's a box flower remedy. Oh, okay. <laughs> wow, yes. You know, so it was just luck, I guess, that everything lined up while I was trying to kind of turn my lifestyle around. I had all the support to do it because I was taking the program. Yeah. yeah. That's wonderful to have the backing of an entire school and then all everyone. And the mentality is very different. You know, when you, when you yeah. start hanging around those peers, it's very, oh yeah. oh yeah. It's like, this is where I want to be, you know, forever right. and ever. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. So can you share with us like one thing that you did do that made a world of difference for you to, I guess, not have any further, what is it, a prognosis? Um, like what is one amazing thing that you know super helped how you felt? One thing? Okay, tell us two. Whatever makes you happy. <laughs> well, I mean, it's, it's the whole lifestyle change, but I would say the food because, you know, you don't realize that you're not digesting properly until you do. And you don't realize that you're not sleeping properly because of, you know, maybe what you're eating until you start eating properly and then you're sleeping properly. And you don't realize that, you know, you have these hormonal imbalances. You kind of do, but you don't realize that you can, you can work with them and, and, and rebalance them yourself with, you know, different supplements and yeah, just everything that I was putting into my body, even if I wasn't exercising or doing some of the other things, you know, prayer and uh, whatever, I think just the adjustment in the diet is made the biggest impact for me. I saw improvements right away in my skin and my hair and my nails and my digestion and my sleep patterns. Like it was phenomenal. And it's like, yeah, I don't have to feel crappy. I can feel good. You know, um, I'm not 20 anymore. And so, you know, I just thought it was normal to feel some of these things that you you just don't feel good as you get older, but that's completely not true. I feel amazing now, better than I've felt in years. So That's amazing. And I love hearing that um, for when you had the pre-cancer diagnosis to now, um, how would you say your life has improved so much then on that feeling basis? <laughs> oh, 100%. Yeah. 100%. Yeah. I mean, just the energy I'm attracting, the people I'm attracting um my happiness level the relationship with my daughters um awesome. everything just i'm doing what i love instead of just worrying about money and being on some treadmill going i gotta get my kids resps and and you do and i did but you know i'm done with that i want to now do something meaningful help people you know achieve some of the things that i have and know that it can be done and uh yeah it's just I don't know. It's, it's the best thing. It's that, like in a way you have to look at it like maybe it was the best thing that ever happened to me. Awesome. Really awesome. Despite, <laughs> despite the struggle of it, you come around the other side and there's so much learning and where it's taken me is phenomenal. That, and I think it was in the end worth it just for that. Like, wow. Right. Well, it's usually, I'm learning that all this week with the, the gurus that I follow as well, is that when you struggle, when you come out the other side, there's so much more gratitude for life. Um, oh yeah. Right? Beautiful. Yeah. Absolutely beautiful. So if there's anything you want to share with our audience, hey, dear audience, um, in our world today or from your own experience, what would, what would you really like to help and share with people today for themselves to learn and know? <sighs> Basically, um, just know that there's, you know, more than one answer out there. And in our field, what we do, maybe what we can do for you that's a little bit different. Like, I'm not a person that it's war with the medical system at yeah. all. I think we all need to work together. Absolutely. I, I'm just not, that's not where I'm at. Good. I need them. And um, I have really open doctors. I'm lucky. So I don't have that kind of mentality. But, you know, what what our me medical system doesn't really do for you is get to the root cause of why you've, you know, developed this dis-ease in the beginning, in the, in the first place. 
Um, so you're sort of sent packing with certain tools and, you know, you work through it and you try and do better, but, you know, holistic nutrition is something that can really, really get to the root cause, help you rebalance, help you feel better. And I just, you know, it's, it's another thing that's available to you and you should do all of it. You know, it's all important. Um, and especially now, and, you know, I think everyone's talking about this with everybody self-isolating and, you know, we're pretty much in lockdown um, and we will be for some time, you know, just take a pause and realize that your immune system and this body that you have is all you have and it's all you're ever going to have. And you can either, you know, give it everything it needs for you to live a long and happy and peaceful life or or you don't. And it's really is in your power to do that. It really is in your control. Yes, you've got unknowns coming at you. Yes, you have genes. Yes, there's pollution. But really, you have a lot more control than you probably think you do. That's brilliant. Because it really is about self-empowerment when we do take back what we put into our bodies. And I love that you said that right now because there's the whole memes out there about having the devil and the angel on the shoulder is now that we're in lockdown, um, do I stick to my regime and, you know, make sure that I come out better than when I started or, you know what, nobody cares anyways, I'm not going to see anyone so I can let myself go. And for me, what I see is in six months from now, three months from now, so much ill health because so many people let themselves go, <laughs> you know? Yeah. So, Yeah. Especially, I feel bad for people who are maybe in the city. I mean, I'm blessed I'm outside the city. I've got a trail behind me. It's open. We can go out there, you know, with our, our pets and our kids and, and go for long walks. And But downtown is particularly challenging. So, you know, they would maybe have to do some, some extra things and yeah, take care of themselves, you know, especially now. I mean, yeah, it's tough. It's yeah. Tough. And there, there is a lot of good whole foods available for oh, people, definitely. right? Oh, yeah, yeah. Everybody's stocked up on the preservatives uh, for the like the, the other <laughs> and stuff. The paper. And the toilet paper that please, Canadians, we create our own toilet paper, we're good. So, <laughs> just wanna throw that out there. <laughs> <laughs> well, I wonder how the sales of bidets have been going, cause you know, that might be something. I kinda want one. <laughs> yeah, I always kinda have, and this has kinda pushed me, cause now there's a portable one getting a little off topic here, but it's, it's a portable one that you can put uh, hooks into the water system of your, your, yeah. your toilet. So you can, yeah, anyway. Absolutely. It's, it's, so poop <laughs> is important people, just so you know, and you're going to hear a lot of that at all these shows. So <laughs> you haven't figured it out yet. <laughs> yeah. What it looks like, all of that. We need to right. know. The color know. that floats, if it sings, you know, yeah. like, so many things. I love it. So thank you so much for sharing your amazing story. And just to let everyone know, how long has it been since you had your diagnosis now? My initial diagnosis was in um, 2014. 2014. Yeah. So six years and your body's just kicking it up in high gear now. Totally. And I'm never going back. Yay. Right. Yay. <laughs> Thank you so much, Linda. Thank so again, you, this is this is the amazing Linda, and you can find her again at Linda. Where did I say that? Linda J Kellogg. That's L I N D A J K E L L O C K at gmail dot com. Uh, so if you like this video, make sure that you do subscribe, and uh, I can't wait to see you again, Linda. Thank you so much. Thank you, Michelle. It was really good to see you too. You betcha. Bye, everyone. Bye. You've been watching the Health Now Nutrition Podcast with Michelle Post. For more information on how you can be part of the holistic and nutrition movement, visit www.healthnow.today to book your meeting.